Welcome back to the 8th lesson on serving Jesus as we prepare for the National Bible Quiz 2021. Today's lesson is on Godly Stewardship of Earthly Riches. Now, before we continue into the lesson, let's recap previous lesson. Can you recall what it would look like to fight the good fight of faith? What was Paul charged to Timothy? And what was the aim or goal of fighting the good fight of faith? Pause the video and discuss this with your friends and officers to recap the previous lesson. Now, what would you do if you are given a million dollars? Or what would you choose to do with this sum of money? And how would you choose to invest or spend it? Why? Pause the video and share your thoughts with your friends and officers. Now, let's look into today's passage that is taken from 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17 and 19. As for the rich in this present age, charge them not to be haughty or nor to set their hopes on the uncertain of riches, but on God who richly provides us with everything to enjoy. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous and ready to share, thus storing up treasure for themselves as a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of what so that they may take hold of that which is truly life. Now let's look into today's passage. Now remember to pause the bit the video in between of the question. What does Paul instruct Timothy to address or charge in this passage? Timothy is to address or charge those who are rich. What is Timothy charged to those who are rich? Those who are rich should not be haughty and also should not set their hopes on rich, but on God. Why should those who are rich set their hopes on God instead of earthly riches? Earthly riches are uncertain. They may be lost, destroyed, or fade away. But God is the one, God is the one who richly provides everything for us to enjoy. What should those who are rich be doing instead? They should be rich in good works and they should be generous and ready to share. Why should those who are rich be godly in the way they use their riches? In doing so, they are storing up treasures for themselves as a good foundation for them to take hold of that which is truly life. Now let's take a moment to think through today's lesson. What does Paul's instruction to Timothy in his charge to those who are rich teach us about how we should use our earthly wealth? Now pause the video and share your thoughts with your friends and officers. Paul wrote to Timothy to charge those who are rich not to be proud and not to put their hopes and confidence in earthly wealth. After all, earthly wealth can very easily disappear, be stolen and lost. Instead, those who are rich ought to have their hopes set on God who is the giver and provider of all things. Sometimes society or the world may tend to take how rich or successful a person is as a yardstick to measure how successful they are in life. I am sure we know of rich people who are often proud of how much they have earned and achieved in life, but this shouldn't be the case as God's people. Our hope should be set on God who is constant, unchanging, and internal. 
How should our identity as God's people affect the way we use our money and our possession? And what should our attitude towards earthly wealth be like in light of this passage? Paul wrote to Timothy to remind those who are rich to be truly rich, that is, they are to be rich in good works. They were to be generous and ready to share their possessions. After all, everything that they have comes from God Himself, from whom all blessings flow. It can be very tempting for us to haul riches for ourselves, but if you but if you can remember that earthly riches are but temporarily, then we will realize that being truly rich is to be rich in God, and that is by seeking to please God in the way we use what He has given to us. After all, the Christian aims is not to store up earthly treasure but treasure in heaven, which God gives to all who seek to serve and live lives which are pleasing to Him. Perhaps you may not be rich, but you, but are you looking for ways to share what you have with those in need, especially those who are your brothers and sisters in Christ? Remember, showing Christ's light love to others by giving to those who are in need, no matter how small the amount may be, Jesus God. And it is all part and parcel of the good works that we are called to do in response to a God who loved us so much that He gave His Son, Jesus, to us unreservedly that we may have life in His name. Now let's dig even deeper and look at the passage taken from Matthew chapter 19 verse 16 to 26. Open up the Bible and read it together with your friend and officer. What do you think was the rich young man's problem? Why do you think Jesus responded in the way he did towards the rich young man? What can we learn from this Bible passage? In this story, a rich young man approached Jesus confidently and asked him what he needed to do to inherit eternal life. This man confidently in himself is seen in his boast that he has kept all the commandments Jesus named to him since he was a boy. This young man confident of being right with God or gaining eternal life obviously rested on what he had done so far in life. This young man however failed to see the problem which he had it in his heart. Jesus' response to this young man might have seemed extreme. Jesus had asked him to sell all he had and give his money to the poor and to come follow him. Jesus' call to the young man wasn't at all unreasonable if he was indeed as perfect as he claimed to be. But Jesus' challenge to this young man revealed the problem of his heart that he treasured his wealth more than anything else in the world even more than he loved God. And hence, he wasn't ready to give up all that he had to follow Jesus. Jesus concluded that it would be bad, it would be in actual fact be impossible for those who are rich to enter God's kingdom. Now, what then? Well, Jesus goes on saying that while it may be impossible for those who are rich to be saved, with God, all things are possible. In fact, it would be utterly impossible for anyone at all to be saved by human effort. That's because, like this rich man, all of us are sinful at heart. We fail to love God the way we ought to. And yet, we can be thankful to God that He, had, that he has made a way for us to be saved through Jesus' death on the cross for our sin. In response to what Jesus has done for us, and our newfound identity as children of God. We seek to live lives which are truly rich, rich towards God, rich towards God in doing good works He has called us to do, storing up internal treasure in heaven. 
Now, before we depart in our own ways, I would like to ask all of us to close with a word of prayer. And these are some of the points that we can pray together. Thank God for the money, earthly blessing He has given to us to enjoy. Pray that God will help us to be godly in the way we use whatever riches that we have. Pray that we will be faithful stewards of the riches God has blessed us with, to be rich in good words and generous in sharing what we have with those who are in need. And pray that God will help us to focus on storing treasure which are internal. That's all for today's lesson. I'll see you next.